good morning everyone so today is the last day of our Bhutan trip and obviously I am feeling very emotional and a little sad uh, so far our trip has been really amazing so many new things we got to see learn uh, the culture of Bhutan and you know interact with such amazing people over here rather now that you know our trip is coming to an end it really feels like you know the days have just breezed past us but anyway you know every good thing come to an end so so is our trip so i just came to the balcony uh, we have a very beautiful balcony attached to our rooms and uh, you know you can easily spend hours just sitting here and staring at the beautiful valley below so we made some tea in our room and then we came to uh, the balcony to enjoy the tea it's a very rainy day today from morning it has been raining and uh, rains like this is also a very different beauty from what we saw so far in Bhutan uh, I think this is the first day we are getting so much of rain on such a rainy day you really don't feel like getting out of the bed but today we were really excited to go to our destination which is the Havel now most of the tour operators will not entertain your request or uh, to go to Ha Valley but fortunately and the, one of the only reason I chose Amideva was that they do take you to all the way to the Ha Valley and we will be crossing Chalala Pass also on the way so today is going to be a very interesting day and rain cannot be a damper to all our excitement so we are ready to start our day now we are proceeding towards the breakfast uh, area uh, food that is a different story in this hotel while the uh, rest everything is great awesome views stay everything food has been a major disappointment and we are not expecting a lot out of the breakfast and that is a good thing because when we finally got to the breakfast uh, uh, counter we saw that the spread was very limited like just bread butter jam some pancakes some uh, bananas and fruit juice so when the number of porters are less they always keep a very limited menu by the time we finished our breakfast the rain had stopped and the view around was really beautiful water droplets were still clinging to the edges of the leaves and the tree branches glistening like tiny jewels in the soft sunlight the puddles were reflecting the sky creating small mirrors on the ground and everything looked so much surreal and serene from paro we will be going to ha valley today on a day's trip covering a distance of 70 kilometers and on the way we will stop at the Chalela Pass. So total we will cover 140 kilometers up and down. I was trying to decide whether a sunny paro or a rain drenched paro, which one looked better. In the end, I realized that both weather conditions give paro a unique beauty, making it impossible to choose just one. The beautiful paddy fields of Paro remind me a lot of rural Bengal and makes me feel much at home. After spending a week here, today was the first day which felt like the onset of monsoon. And it made the place even more pretty. I felt like stopping by at a regular intervals to take some still photos because the weather, the views were so, so, so beautiful. And now shortly you can see the Bhutan airport or the airstrip of Bhutan airport in the horizon, in the right hand side of the screen. Uh, we are not going to stop there right now, there's a viewpoint, but while coming back we will stop there.
Paro to Chalala Pass distance is about 40 kilometers and it takes around one and a half hour by car. The drive to Chalala Pass from Paro offers splendid views of the thriving flora and the fauna around. The surrounding areas of this pass has several ancient trails and numerous untouched forest regions which make this place the ideal spot for all hikers. And since it was a rain drenched day, the beauty was almost 10 times magnified versus just a sunny day. So I'll let you enjoy the view of the road and I'll get back in a while. Hope you really enjoyed that rain drenched foggy road trip till Chalala Pass and yeah now we have almost reached the Chalala Pass and just look at how the weather has changed completely. It is super foggy, super cloudy and though I did not have any expectation of seeing the peaks around but you know this is like you know a complete blanket of fog and i'm i'm sure we are not we will not be able to see any of those mountain peaks around we have reached the chalala pass and look at the fog you cannot see anything beyond this point chalala pass is the highest motorable pass in bhutan standing at an impressive altitude of 13,000 feet and connecting the Paro and the Ha valleys. The pass has both strategic and spiritual significance in the Bhutanese history. And legend has that the pass was once used as a crossing point for travelers, monks and traders journeying between the Paro and the Ha valley. It served as an ancient trading route bringing goods from Tibet and other parts of Bhutan. In addition to its economic importance, Chalala is also a spiritual gateway. The pass is adorned with countless prayer flags which carry the blessings and prayers to the heaven. The pass is also considered a sacred place due to its proximity to several holy sites. On a clear day, it offers breathtaking views of Mount Jomolari and the surrounding Himalayan peaks, making it a pilgrimage for nature lovers and photographers alike.
after spending a considerable amount of time at this Chalala Pass, Funcho asked us that whether we want to proceed towards Ha, considering it's a very foggy day and uh, the journey uh, ahead from Chalala to Ha was not going to be that smooth at certain points. But and we saw that more, uh, many tourists, I think 90% of the tourists were turning back from Chalala towards Paro. But we decided to stick to our decision and told Funsho that we will be proceeding towards Ha. And it turned out to be one of the best decisions because I really wanted to see how Ha looked. And look, the moment we crossed Chelela on the other side of the huge thick wall of fog, the sky slowly started to clear up and we could see the beautiful valley of Ha below. So it, it's like, you know, a little surprising that just all the fog, all the, the thick layer of cloud and fog was just accumulated at the pass and before and after that, like after that especially, we are not seeing any of that thick fog anymore. And the beauty I cannot tell, I mean the camera cannot do the justice which the eyes can see. So you need to come here to enjoy the beauty of her. Nestled in the western part of the country, near the border with Tibet, the Ha Valley is often referred to as the Hidden Land. Local legends speak of powerful deities including Aap Chundu, a male warrior deity, and Jovo Draken, a female mountain deity, who once protected the valley. In the 8th century, Guru Rinpoche visited the valley, subdued the spirits and blessed the valley which led to the construction of several important monasteries including the White Temple and the Black Temple. The valley's proximity to Tibet made it a key route for trade and communication but it also made it vulnerable to invasions and incursions. In the 17th century, under the reign of Zagrum, Ha was fortified to protect the country from Tibetan invasions. The local community here, predominantly composed of Haps, has maintained traditional Bhutanese customs, clothings and language over centuries. Agriculture plays a significant role in Valley's economy, with terraced fields growing wheat, barley and potatoes. It's also famous for yak products such as butter, cheese and wool and a special buckwheat momo called Honte. We have almost reached the Ha town and today our plan is to first visit the White Temple and then go into the town and experience a typical local lunch and also enjoy Honte. We have reached the White Temple now and we'll be shortly going inside but before that I wanted to give you a glimpse of an interesting thing. We have always seen Funsho drape around a shawl or a scarf like thing around him known as Kabne before entering the temple premise and we were very interested about knowing how this scarf holds on itself. So I asked Funsho to demonstrate it for us. 
The color of the kabney indicates the wearer's role or status like here the white signifies the color worn by the commoners. It's a mark of respect and dignity often required at formal gatherings and ceremonies. We keep like three fringes inside indicating the uh, the three uh, like triple gems or we have like we call the triple gems or the tawasum tawasum meaning like king country and people oh yeah so then so just four yeah, we'll do it. This, like this here there's just three fringes we keep it like this then we hold and then we throw this back like this okay The temples in Bhutan have a lot of stairs which I had mentioned earlier and that is the reason why my mom has been carrying her hiding stick everywhere. Here she is asking Fucho about the number of stairs she has one to climb. Only one set one of stairs? <laughs> Become stronger <laughs> the time. Oh, the time. <laughs> oh, so many I have to bring the No, it is better she brings the stick. Administrative of the hard stick. Which is the um, uh, administrative of block? This side. This okay. Side. Administrative. Temple, white, the white temple is in the center. Okay, the and this side the, is the this side is the this side has been like used by the monk as a for staying a residential place. Okay, and you know, uh, so this temple dates back to the seventh century again. Hmm. So the Thongjin Gambo, Tibetan first Dharma king, uh, has like, you know, had released two uh, birds, hmm. white and then the dark black birds. So the, just to locate the place where to construct the temple. So the white bird landed over here, okay. and then dark uh, bird landed over like uh, just above this one, few kilometers above this one, and then so accordingly uh, he has constructed the temple. The Ha Temple feels like a timeless beauty against the beautiful backdrop of the green mountains of the Ha Valley. Favorite steps. Mommy <laughs> <laughs> likes step very much. <laughs> That's why if you I am getting st <laughs> steps. <laughs> I think steps loves me. <laughs> she is getting steps everywhere. <laughs> Mommy also loves uh, steps. Steps also loves back. Mommy steps. So that's why. Everywhere she is going, there is steps. <laughs> The Lakhang Karpo is situated in the tiny village of Ujo at the foothills of the three towering mountains venerated as the Riksam Gonpo and is three kilometers south of the Ha town. The peaceful ambience of this temple is truly captivating. As you step into the temple grounds, a sense of calm immediately overcomes you. It feels like time slows down here offering a moment of reflection and inner peace in the heart of the Ha Valley. People say that the guardian deity Aap Chundu himself was responsible for the installation of the main statues in the monastery, especially the statue of Amitayas. According to a legend, with only the torso of the statue complete, a man appeared with the head of a statue and offered it to the temple for a price. The head fitted perfectly onto the body of the Amitayas and the man disappeared without taking the payment. People believe that he was the deity Aap Chandu.
When the Tibetans sent and king Songseng Gampo undertook the building of 108 temples, according to a prophecy, he selected the Ha Valley as the site for the two of the temples. The white temple is Nakhang Karpo, which we just visited, and then there is a black temple, which is also known as the Nakhang Nakpo. This is also situated in the Dungcho village. You need a 20 to 25 minute hike to reach the black temple from here. And as the name suggests, the black temple has a distinctive grayish black wall instead of a white wall. Today, both temples stand as the guardian sentinels, keeping a watch at the southern entrance of the Ha Valley. When we were going inside the temple, we had seen water coming out of this very unique fish-shaped uh, sculpture. But when we came out, there was no water. So we got a little curious as to how we can operate this thing, whether we can bring the water out. And finally, my mom was able to figure it out. Oh, this is so nice. <laughs> I wanted to visit the black temple also but uh, I heard from Funcho that it was a 15 to 20 minutes hike from here plus it was almost uh, noon time and we had to head back to Paro also so he suggested that we go ahead for the lunch instead in the town. Without stairs, you have chosen one Throughout the trip, Funcho has been a champ for finding us good food joints which serves local food, local Bhutanese food. Uh, this was also not an exception and this was a small joint but a very quaint joint. The insides look pretty. We had a very beautiful view of the town outside and uh, we d what we did in today's lunch was that we invited Sangi and Funcho also to dine with us. Now this is not mandatory to invite your uh, driver and your guide to lunch but usually it is taken as a very good gesture if you are inviting them to one meal during your entire trip. Okay, this is the whole thing. <laughs> The whole thing. 
fried chicken. This is potato, I think. This is potato? And that one, that potol. Is... This is chicken. Uh, eggplant. 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 We are getting something new to taste this time. Mm. This is uh, emadachi, right? Emadachi. It looks very good. We can right start serving. I will just first have this one. I have heard so much of it about this. Now you have this. This was the first time I was trying Hunte, but compared to the buckwheat pancake, I did not like Hunte that much. So nice things are there. It is it is nice to decide. The food looks really good. The beautiful lady you see here who was serving us was also the owner of this place. We kept getting more food from her every now and then and it was really a huge huge platter for us. Why your tea is in color? Uh, color is they are taking milk tea. <laughs> we are taking suja. Mm, I like suja. You don't take beef at all? No. Uh, I never tried. I can try. You, are you getting it? Yeah, I will try it. They are giving to us. Mm -hmm. I can try it. I am a vegetarian. You are a vegetarian? Yes. Oh, this is this I will take. Will they refill if we ask for anything? Plate, bad plate, damn me, I think this curry they can but rice they will take. Oh. What? What is this? Oh, I will take. I will take them. Potato is very nice. What is uh, so? This is chutney something chutney, yeah? Chutney, yes. After yesterday's meal, this is tasting really heavenly. Mm. This is really nice. Actually, this food is great. Mm. Much paper. Spiciest chili we had so far. Still did. <laughs> Both potato and fried brinjal is great. You take this because you are eating only vegetables. I was very inquisitive about the necklace like things that she was wearing, but got to know it is known as koma, which is like uh, silver pins to fasten the half kira. Thank you for the food. We have so many greeneries in this place, huh? that is one of the other good things. Okay, nice. After that satisfying meal, we went for a walk around the town. Ha town in Bhutan shares its boundaries with Paro district, Chukha and Samse. The scenic town is situated along the banks of the Hachu river and forms two distinct sectors, the northern and the southern half. While the northern half is dotted with the bustling central bazaar, several eateries and tiny shops, the southern half is occupied by the Indian military training camp and Bhutanese army training camp. Ha Valley is really beautiful, untouched and serene, and there are many stay options including both homestays and hotels. You will mostly find foreigners opting for night stays as they prefer this area for its beautiful hiking trails. The southern half of Ha Town is guarded by three towering hills called the Trinity of Chenresik, Chanadorje and Jampelia. Now we are heading towards Paro and the weather as you can see has cleared up a lot compared to what we saw in the morning so hopefully Chelela will also be better. Because now 
now it is cleared up a bit. As expected, we encountered a much clearer weather at the Chalela Pass and though there was cloud cover, you could clearly see the distant mountains. I took a nice and leisurely walk on the approach road to the Chalela Pass because the weather was so nice, it was cold but clear and it really felt amazing to walk on this road. We have now stopped at the Paro Airport Bird's Eye Viewpoint. This viewpoint offers a captivating vantage point overlooking the runway of Paro International Airport in Bhutan. The Bird's Eye Viewpoint is one of those most thrilling spots to watch planes land and take off amidst the stunning Himalayan landscape. Visitors can watch as airplanes take off and land on the short runway navigating through narrow mountain valleys with precision and skill. Paro Airport is known for being one of the world's most difficult airstrips to land at. And there are a couple of reasons for that like a short runway, surrounded by mountains which are approximately 18,000 feet tall, extreme crosswinds and unpredictable weather. To land at Paro Airport, pilots must have at least 1500 hours of flight experience, including 500 hours of mountain flying. Thus, only a handful of pilots are qualified to land here. Precisely 8. And you can now witness one of those spectacular landings on the screen.
We had just stopped at this airport viewpoint on our way back to Paro and we didn't have any clue as to the flight timings of landing and takeoff. But just look at our luck. We saw a landing and now there is a takeoff happening. Since it is such a difficult terrain, so it took a long time for the flight to navigate through the uh, narrow airstrip and take off. But uh, just for your sake, I have increased the speed so that you don't have to wait for seeing the main visuals. As this is our final evening in Paro or even in Bhutan, so we wanted to do some final shopping and town exploration and we came to the Paro main market. I had read everywhere that shopping in Paro is an expensive affair and it's very much true. I got to know that once I visited a couple of souvenir stores along the main street of Paro everything was like you know super super expensive so if you want to get some good economic cheap souvenirs back i think Thimpu is one of the best places i was feeling hungry after all that exploration and wanted to check out one of their cute cafes owned by a five star hotel pastry chef Brioche Cafe offers the most exquisite cakes and pastries in the entire town of Paro. The cafe also bakes all kinds of French pastries. Top of the list are tarts, apple pie, homemade ice creams and sorbet. And combine that with a good, really good cup of coffee or masala tea. You can drop by for a quick bite or for a long endless coffee conversation in this cafe. The cream horns that I got from here were one of the best cream horns that I've ever had in my entire life and that is not an overstatement. I think I discovered this cafe very late in our trip otherwise I would have visited this place on both days that we stayed in Paro. Here are some snapshots from the end of our day while we were going around the Paro town. Uh, I will be ending my video here only today because I did not shoot our dinner time as there was some change in plans that I was trying to accommodate for the next day during our return to India and to Kolkata. Uh, earlier there was a train that we had to catch but uh, I was checking and it showed me around 11 to 12 hours delay so I had to book a last moment flight from Bagdogra to Kolkata and hence I did not get time to shoot. Anyway, see you in the next episode. I'll try to make one more episode which will cover the last day in Bhutan and our travel back to India. Stay tuned.